Welcome yet again, and uh, please don't forget our YouTube channel, will you? Today I want to take a step forward to the Gospel of this coming Sunday. In this Gospel, Matthew records how Jesus took three disciples, Peter, James and John, up a high mountain, and there he revealed to them his glory. He was transfigured. And this was for their sake. Jesus revealed who he really was. And then it's followed with a voice from the cloud that says, again directed to the disciples, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. And Jesus reveals to them his glory, the glory he has as being Son or beloved Son, the beloved Son of God. And he does this so the disciples will come to know him. They'd come to know this Jesus of Nazareth. This carpenter for maybe 15, 20 years. But now a mendicant preacher and healer. A preacher and teacher. A man who forgives sinners. A man who announces the good news. A man who has a special relationship with God. Because he's able to call God Abba in Aramaic, or Daddy, or Dad, or Pop in English. And he does this so that the disciples would come to know him. And the disciples are overawed by the experience. Because Jesus is able to call God Abba and able to reveal this glory that is in him because of his fidelity to God, his love for God and everybody and everything, and his goodness and his truth. God, as we, or Jesus, as we know, was like us in all things, but sin. So there was no barrier, no limit to what he could reveal, express, or share. And the disciples came to know him, to know who he was. Because the disciples also were sons and daughters of God. And we likewise have that same dignity. We are sons and daughters, beloved sons and daughters of God, in Jesus. So we have, to a lesser extent, but we have the same relationship with God. And we have within us the same glory that is there. We likewise have the glory of God in us. And Irenaeus has that beautiful phrase, the glory of God is man fully alive. Now, of course, today we'd probably say the glory of God is the person fully alive. Or we might say the people fully alive. And I think that's where Francis comes in, the Pope. And for 10 years now, he has recognised or encouraged or uh, motivated us to relate, to meet, to encounter one another. And he's doing that now, especially with the emphasis on synodality. And he is taking, I think, he could be taking from the Transfiguration, listen to him. And Francis is inviting us to listen, to hear one another, to respect one another. We don't have to throw out um, our point of view or our information, but we can be enriched by the perspectives, the appreciation of one another so that we listen and hear the other. 
that we look and see the other. And now I think that is what Francis is inviting us to do in synodality. And so I pray this morning that we might be able to live this time of synodality. In October, we have the Synod on Synodality in Rome, which is going to be comprised of the Pope, obviously, but of selected bishops, selected laity, uh, and selected religious. And they will be there trying to listen together to what the Spirit is saying. And so in this Feast of the Transfiguration, I invite us all to listen to one another, to see or recognize or hear the glory that is in each and other, each um, son and daughter of God, because it's there, because we're created in the image and likeness of God, and we're called to be sons and daughters of God in Jesus. Jesus who revealed that glory to his disciples. And may we give, that, give the Spirit the chance to move so that we'll come to know the glory of God in our time, in our place, and with one another. Thank you.